Hey guys, this is Ross with Hamel Bros Studios and I want to give you a tutorial on how to use Frame.io. Now, most obvious question is what is Frame.io? And for people in the video film industry, it's an excellent platform where th there's a lot of uses, but what we use it for, thank you little robot, what we use it for is for revisions and notes on projects. So um, if you're familiar with how YouTube operates, this is something very similar. And the reason we use it is because over the last several years, and you've probably seen this done or thought about doing things this way, but you get a video and you want to send revisions and what do you do? You just type them in a Word document or a Google Doc or whatever and send them off and say, hey, here about five seconds, do this. At 10 seconds, do that. But it's not very accurate. And sometimes a lot of things get lost in translation. Like uh, we had a, a representative of one of our clients who was using terms inappropriately so they were saying one thing and it meant something else and we had no idea what they were saying so we've moved into this platform to really help level the playing field and make things a lot more precise the other big advantage for us is that this syncs with our video editing platforms so you leave a comment it populates automatically in our projects and it's very very specific it is like frame specific no pun intended like literal uh shifting by video frames so let's dive into it so first thing you're going to get from us is you will receive a review link which i've got one here i'm just going to copy i'm going to paste it in here and this is a commercial that we shot i think in 2020 yeah two years ago for a client of ours down in Midland, Texas, Spencer Dobbs. And obviously you can click and drag your way through just with the mouse if you want. Um, you can actually move forward and backwards one frame at a time using the left and right arrow keys. Left is back, right is forward. If you're familiar with the video world, um, we use the JKL keys on the keyboard. So J is backwards, K is stop, L is forwards. And you can actually you know, hit those a few times and adjust your playback speed, be it forward or backward. Now, the first thing that I recommend doing when you get to this page, uh, if you've futzed around with it, you played, you know, you've scrolled through, whatever. First thing I recommend doing is going down here where it says time format, hit the drop down arrow and select time code. And that will give you exact frames. So I'm going to move frame by frame. You can see the frame is moving incrementally up and down in single units. So um, you have that. Same thing with the JKL, you can kind of watch it in real time, um, or you can always hit your space bar to play and stop. So that is kind of how this works in a nutshell, and it's super handy when it comes to needing things that are very frame specific. So let's um, start off with, you know, just leaving a comment. So let's say, let's just leave a comment here. I'm going to type in here. So, is this sky real? I don't know. Is it? Looks kind of fake. I can tell you it is real. Um, aerial footage in this, courtesy of our good friend Sean Lamb at West Texas Aerials. So, I'm going to go ahead. The comments typed. I'm going to hit the enter key, or you can select send. And I'm just going to type in my email. And let's just go here. And I do want to iterate that this is all secure. So I've actually already created this. Um, it's under Ross test. But 
if you haven't used this before, then when you put in your email, it'll ask you to put in a name, but it's all secure. We don't get your information. Um, they don't publish your information, so you don't really have to worry about any of that. So very, very easy to use platform, but our first comment pops up right there, shows nine seconds, 19 frames. And let's say um, you had something else to say here. Um, so you can just reply. And so pretty easy. So the basic function here is just leaving comments and it's synchronizing with our editing software. It makes it very easy, but this does go a lot deeper. I say a lot deeper, not really that much deeper. Um, we can take a look at the interface. You've got guides here if you want. Um, if you're looking at doing this for social media, you can set what looks like a one by one crop. You can go four by three, what it would look like on an old TV station. Uh, 2.35 anamorphic, um, or you can just have them off and go full screen if you want, just to be able to watch it back. You can set playback speed. Um, picture in picture, not gonna mess with that right now because I don't foresee it being useful. But let's just go back here and get into some of the nitty gritty. Let's just take a look. Let's maybe go to this shot here and say we have a comment. Yes, I'm questioning if a lot of things are real, but that's mostly because I am a visual effects artist and, you know, that uh, I don't believe anything I see. So. Let's click right down here. You see a little paintbrush and what looks like a color wheel. You select that. We can select the paintbrush and we have a few different colors to pick from here. I'm just going to go with blue and this will actually attach to the comment. So I can, you know, is this lens flare real? I don't know which lens flare, this lens flare, you can point it out, you can circle it. Um, so we have that, go ahead and send that one. And then let's just maybe scoot in a little further, pick another shot here. And let's say the crane is kind of distracting. And these are just tools. You don't obviously have to use all of these, but I think they're kind of cool. So, oops, got that the wrong way. So, I'm gonna undo you. You have undo buttons, and I'm just gonna you know, select a different color that will contrast against the sky a little better. So let's just drag, and you can actually draw an arrow in, and that will again attach. So if I click on the comment over here, you see that. Um, if I click on this comment, pulls that up. Um, and while we're here, let's just maybe arrow over a couple of frames and let's just see what else we have. So we have what I would call a marquee tool. I'm going to go with, let's try green and let's just highlight this. And I'm going to leave a comment that says shot. This shot was random that's wasn't actually in emergency mode so we had to add the lights in post so true story actually so so click on the comment it selects the box and yes, uh, none of the lights on that ambulance were actually working um, for this shot. I We had to go back and do all that, but let's just uh, go here and say, let's go to uh, see what this guy does. I think it just draws a line. So if we want to say, 
Yeah, I can't really see that. So I'm going to undo, maybe pick a different color here. And it's a straight line. You can actually draw pretty much any shape you want out of straight lines. Enter, hit send. You can add emojis if you want. Um, it looks like, and I could be wrong, but these look like Apple emojis, so you may have different options uh, if you're on Windows. But it's pretty pretty easy to do all this. You just, like I said, you move your, use your arrow keys to line up on a specific time code. Leave a comment here, hit enter, and it's done. Now, one last thing that I will jump into here while we're looking at how all of this functions is you can do time span comments. And what I mean by that is let's just go here. Shots are great. And so before we hit enter, you see over here where the comment is, you actually have these two brackets around the circle and you can drag them out. So we're gonna, and the nice thing is you don't have to just let, you don't have to hold on to it forever. So let's just say, like that one, but I can't seem to nail that transition. So if you hold down the shift key, it allows you to move frame by frame, which is very helpful. And then we hit send. And I know that that comment is just referencing these bits here. So a couple of other things just to tie this up. Um, if there are different versions of the videos, the versions can be selected up here. So this one has two versions. So we actually have a, an uncolored version, which is version one, and then version two, click out of there. We have the colored version and basically the final. And you have a one more option, you can actually compare versions and do a side by side, which is really helpful. Um, if there are more than two versions, you can select which versions you want to view on which side. And it will play them both synchronized. Now, obviously, if your edits are different, it's not going to be the same on both sides. So if, let's say, we cut this shot short on the right side went to the ambulance shot earlier it would transition sooner but since these are both pretty much the same edits actually they're not pretty much they are the exact same edits they will uh, they line up and it does get a little bit laggy uh, or it can if you're scrolling through so um, you can tell it which version to play the audio from if you need to Going to go back to player. And then the last thing I'm going to show you is you have, if you click the bubble up here, you can show or hide comments. Um, nothing too fancy, but status is the last thing. So it defaults to no status. Um, I try to set this to needs review if, um, if I think about it. Um, in progress is something that we can set it to if you leave notes and we need to change, you know, we got things to change. The one that you will have control over, uh, you could set really any one of these, but the one that's the most helpful is approved. If you're, if we're done with it, if you're happy, then you click approved and it's off to the races. So it looks like, um, as you can see, uh, Jacob is getting the comments since he and I are both admins on this account, uh, we get, we both get the comments. And so as people leave comments and you can share this with, I wouldn't recommend sharing it with whoever you want, but if you have different people in the office that need 
need to add feedback, um, the link can be shared, although we don't recommend it. We typically prefer having just one person in charge if they're all in the same, obviously in the same building. If it's, if it's different locations that we're sending this to, let's say we were sending it to a client and sending it to an agency and the agency had feedback and the client had feedback, um, that would be a little bit different. But, um, but as you can see, we're just going to let them know. But basically, you can uh, converse in there and all the comments show up. So that's helpful if somebody is, let's say, you're both commenting on the same issue. If one person comments, you can see that they've already commented and you don't need to add an additional comment for the sake of redundancy. Now, if you have something to add to the comment, you can you can reply, no problem. But um, it's a really great platform. We love using it. Um, we practically insist on comments coming through this way, but it really helps streamline things. It saves time for us. And ultimately, if you're one of our clients, it saves you money because we're not spending minutes or hours trying to decipher notes out of a document that has very imprecise time code references. Anyway, that wraps this up. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I will do my best to address them. But uh, that about does it. So we will catch you next time.